And that brings us actually to the top 30. Um, so for these, we're going to talk a little bit more about the robot. And then as we get to the bottom, we're going to talk quite a bit about the robots. And we're going to kick it off with team 315. All right. So 315, I saw, I saw the robot and it was sort of a ground intake and it would simply just dump it into, or from what I saw, dump it into the low goal or in the lower goal or like the mid to mid goal. Now, I, I thought that was pretty interesting that it was just a tipping thing because there was an old team in our area that w had a similar thing for 2012 and it worked pretty effectively. But the problem is they're on Omnis and there's a lot of weight in that tipper. And the reason why that's going to be a problem is because when it tips on Omni, when that weight moves on Omnis, that has a very high chance of going timber. So I would not trust on the field, in my opinion. Definitely. But that's definitely something that they could change pretty easily. Might be one of those things that they build the robot, they practice for a little bit, and, oh, man, we tip a lot. Let's change out the wheels. Let's change our COG around. Um, so overall, a pretty solid design. They were, they were, they were there. Um, and that will move us to team two, 265 in the 29th ranked spot. So it was a simple, robust, and lightweight design. And their intake was, it looked like a lot of the stronghold intakes with the mechanic wheels. And they're, they're one of the teams that they suffered with using Neo motors, but not using Spark Max motor controllers. And they can't do Presence of the Star, but they have an efficient looking drivetrain and ornament manipulator. Yeah, definitely. And I'm just going to call Parker in real quick for a second. What was the ratio of teams with Neos to Spark Maxes? <laughs> yeah, I did the math on this. Um, and thanks for reminding me. Uh, about, I'd say, 50% of teams used Neo motors. However, it seems that about 50% of those teams that used them didn't realize that you need a custom <laughs> or a, a different brushless motor controller. So um, if we were going to judge very strictly on how these robots worked, uh, about 25 of the robots would be dead in the water without any way of driving. <laughs> so just so you know, we, we, we kind of, as we went through them, realized that a lot of teams kind of had that same pitfall and didn't, weren't too harsh on it, but it was fun. So make sure when you actually build your robot to put in those Spark Max controllers if you're going to use Neos. Otherwise, it will not work. <laughs> Sam, I want to jump in here for a second. And there was a, a comment by KBoo Forever that says uh, that this challenge is like Steamworks. Would you guys agree with that uh, in regards to the game challenge, or how is it different? Um, yeah, I mean, personally, I'd say that it is a little bit like Steamworks. Um, I mean... It, the, the shooting challenge part of it definitely is. It's only three ornaments is the max amount you're able to hold. So I think that brings it a little bit towards 2012. And then I think the whole present um, piece is a little bit like 2018. I don't think the star uh, uh, part of this, which we really haven't gotten too much because I don't think any of the robots outside of the top 15 or so actually have star mechanisms. Um, but once we get to the star mechanisms, I think that's pretty unique. Uh, but overall, what, what do you guys think? I personally think that it is definitely a part of 2012 with the shooting of three mid, mid to small size balls. But I feel like uh, maybe a little bit of what's it called log or locomotion and, uh, and that um, aspect of uh, power up. But the thing is with power up, that's with the, with the presence, that's just something you should be able to do with just pushing. And it's like, the, it's like, uh, pressure in 2017 to where it's not regarded at all right yeah, I, oh sorry go ahead. um the uh yeah i feel that a lot of teams as well um i noticed uh maybe a bunch of newer members that don't remember know of 2012 that well took a lot of inspiration from stronghold in taking and shooting uh the game pieces are different and a few teams that i might have brought up already and we're going to see um Used very pretty much stronghold, uh, stronghold systems for compliant balls, and these rigid balls a lot of times won't work in the same way. So there was a lot of stronghold that I was seeing, even though that wasn't uh, necessarily the most relevant. Uh, but it was recent, so I did notice Makes that sense. as well. Colin, do you have anything to add? The only similarity I really see is the trees being where the airships were. 
<laughs> right, mm-hmm. definitely definitely looks a little bit like Steamworks. That's for sure. I think that moves us to our 28th ranked team, which is team 304. 304. Um, I, I enjoyed how simple it was. Um, it didn't have a lot of detail in the CAD, but it didn't really need that much. It, the, me- the mechanisms themselves were very simple but complete. Um, the instead of using any kind of power feed for shooting or anything, they just had a, a a fixed angle hopper that they could load balls in one side and then and then and then use an elevator to to drop it out. And what's also good is that they have a a, a star mechanism that would be pretty hard to load. I, I feel, um, but they did integrate an attempt at a star mechanism um, that is of of the appropriate height into their. Um, into their kind of elevator hopper thing, which is nice. Um, it was it was it was good, it, and it was simple and effective, um, but not especially effective. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it wasn't elite, but it could definitely play the game well, and in, the cat yeah. detail was definitely there. That will move us to team two ninety nine in the twenty seventh place. All right, so team two ninety nine. Uh, it was. From I was surprised by it because it was base, basically what looked like a large PVC tube on a on a ele- on a single single sided elevator. Now, honestly, like after reading <coughs> reading through what they said, I I was thinking this could actually work. The one problem I saw was that the tube was fixed in its uh, opening because the that opening. Uh, would be extremely hard to precisely get balls in. Like you, you, I'd say to if I had to make one change to it, I would make it a make a, a bigger funnel that could easily feed the balls into it. And the star mechanism was decent. I would say like it's a little bit flimsy because of the fact that it's so tiny, so small. But overall, I would say tweak one thing here and there, and you can see it at your champs. Yeah, no, definitely. This was a super creative robot. I think I gave it a five on creativity when I judged it just because I really loved their whole 90 degree PVC uh, angle sort of thing. But um, yeah, no, it was actually effective, uh, which is something you don't see a lot out of these super creative robots. Um, so overall, a good effort. And I think it a, swerved too. It did. Yeah, it was. Really oh, cool. yeah. Like it was a it was a triangle swerve shape. Yep. It would have been cool if it was a nonagon. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right. To address um, one of the questions in the chat, they asked, uh, did they judge every team and are there notes you can see? So so the first point, yes, um, every team was judged uh, by all of us for um, and then we averaged the scores together. And as for notes, we do release our judges notes after the stream. Um, so check, take a look on Chief Delphi for those um, when they are going to come out. And, <laughs> when <Chief> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no joke. Um, moving to the 26th ranked bot, we have team 292. So team 292 was a very tall robot. It had extremely long pneumatic pistons that would extend to place their star. And they had a very, very cool Neo in wheel swerve. And unfortunately, this is one of the teams that fell victim to using Neos, but <laughs> no spark max. But otherwise, they had a really cool intake how... Because the swerve, they can just take in from the side. But one issue I did see with that is if they accidentally intake too quickly, if they don't have those proper, then it could fly out the other side. Yeah. Because the battery can act like a ramp the way it is. Yeah, no, I noticed that. Um... And, oh, and also their strategy, they said they could score 50 to 60 balls, which <laughs> that seems very difficult to yeah, do. Yeah, you could cut through that with a fine edge knife there. <laughs> yeah. That's a classic pit scouting though, let me tell you. Um, if, um, I, I say, have no idea. <laughs> one more thing on 292 that actually impressed me is, or at least they found a uh, unique, I think it's Bimba part, where it's actually a telescoping piston, I think is what they referenced. And it's it's a cool like niche cots part that not many people find. And they did put it in, in, in a usage that wasn't great but good, <laughs> good on them for finding that part that was that was pretty cool to see yeah no i didn't notice that i'm gonna have to dive into that later um that will move us to the 25th ranked team which is team 256 parker oh that's me sorry yeah um <laughs> uh, so this is a very uh holiday cheer robot um one of the red and green ones um 
the, uh, <laughs> they had a kind of a, a two doff arm that w- was kind of clever because it had a full um, the 360 degree range of motion ex- accepting cables or something like that but they were able to um, theoretically intake and score with both sides of their robot or or intake from one side score with the other they're, they're really flexible in that capacity uh, the arm itself um, well, probably wasn't great our arms are hard to do right um, they require uh, good good controls good design for controls um, I didn't see any encoders which would be almost br- uh, required um, no real hard stops or any kind of way of indexing the arm so in terms of controls and also just the mechanics of it I think they're only driving it on with one uh, motor and gearbox per side of the arm so so the arm wasn't great but um, but the concept is really solid the drive bases those are tend to be pretty good and yeah it was uh, a, a Christmas wrapping on the bumper <laughs> yeah. nice. Gave points for that, as well as yeah. something that I noticed that they did was they added in a little slot for the presence. A lot of teams um, were like, okay, yeah, we'll push the presence. Um, but having that extra little slot and cut away in their bumpers allows them to actually get inside of the presence, um, so it's much less prone to defense just knocking the present off of them, which I really enjoyed. And that will move us to the 24th ranked robot, which is Team 200. Now, the thing about Team 200, it's cad to me looks like it took a little bit of a copy from an older 2012 turret. And honestly, that, that sort of drew me away from it and that like it had, it lacked a little bit of creativity, but they definitely had some good detail and design in what they did. Like, so I, I felt, I saw like a lot of stuff in the CAD, a little bit was missing. Uh, the one thing I would say is that the fact that, in a match, the fact that it's a static elevator and has very little sort of range of movement and angling, I would say that it's going to be harder for them to effectively get the ball because they would have to keep on shooting it from the same spot and uh, and thinking like, oh, okay, so if they can only shoot from that spot, then we'll just block that spot. Right. So yeah, no, there was definitely a little bit of range of motion, but for what it was, uh, it could definitely play the game well, and it looks very robust, which I, I really enjoyed about this robot. That's going to move us to the 23rd ranked team, Team 290. So Team 290, they had a short bot, and they had arms. It, these reminded me of 971 in 2016, and it, it would fold up and shoot balls into the any level of the tree, and they also plopped a star scoring mechanism on top of that, which, based on how it looks, it doesn't look like it would hold it very well. And also, on top of all that, the weight savings patterns are pretty cool looking. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. It it looked like uh, they had a good star arm, but I tried to measure, and I think, Colton, you measured too. Oh, we weren't yeah. able to figure we, the arm did not look nearly tall enough to score the star, uh, even though they said it did in their scouting. Maybe we missed something, but I couldn't figure out how that happened. Yeah, mm-hmm. forgot about that. Yeah, I was looking through that as well. And another thing, this comes back to the same point um, Parker made a little bit ago. And it's an arm, it's going to be really hard to control that arm. You have mm-hmm. three different degrees of freedom on that, um, or there are three different points of rotation on that. And man, you must have some really good programmers if you're going to program that because it's going to be super clunky to drive without. Some really nicely tuned closed loop control um, and some nice preset positions for it to actually do its scoring. Yeah, unless you have a 971 alumni on your team, I <laughs> doubt you're going to get that extremely down pat. <laughs> At least adding, adding, adding coders. Yeah. That's the requirement. <laughs> That'd be a good start. All right, that'll move us to our 22nd ranked team, Team 282. So 282 was a was a clever one. They had a um, a U shaped intake, a combined hopper intake and uh, shooter, so they could intake from one side and shoot out the other. Um, it had some some rollers on them, and then a a central conveyor belt that would would bring them around. Um, they used rollers along that U when. I think just a solid sheet would have been fine, and actually the rollers, considering that these balls are very rigid, might actually make it worse than just a solid curved piece of polycarb. Um, the uh, the shooter was was about as good, as good as I could judge just off of off of CAD. There's a lot of nuance that you can't capture. Um, 
the star claw looked unfinished that didn't really have actuators or didn't have sufficient actuators and also again it would need encoders or some kind of better controls than what it had to have a chance of working um, and then the CAD lacked some some detail in terms of gussets and, and, and mechanical supports and maybe electronics too. My notes, uh, I'm not sure if I added that, but that was my evaluation. Yeah, and I think something that you know you should really take away from this is we're stressing quite a bit of sensors, encoders. Catting those in is super important because anyone who's designed an FRC bot and then try to put encoders on it after knows it's really hard. If you start designing with encoders as you're going and other sensors, you're going to be a lot happier when you start to build this, and your programmers are going to be a lot happier when they start trying to program your robot because it's much harder to add them in after the fact than while you're continuing doing your design. So that's something we tried to definitely stress this time around. The difference between mechanical design and robotics design is systems-level stuff like sensors and compute and stuff like that. Definitely. All right, that moves us to Team 286 in the 21st ranked spot. Now, for 286, I felt that their CAD had a lot of good detail on it. Like, so I, I just like, saw a lot of good nuances with it that like, really caught my eye. And the fact that they have like this ground, like this, it's one of the basic ones where it's like a ground, a, a rotating uh, tube on, a, on an elevator that will lift it up to the thing. Now, I think this is one of the better ones who did it, but there's still some problems with it, as in I saw, okay, the possibility of balls getting stuck in the, stuck in the tube, because like, I, I saw some stuff to where it could jam. Or the fact that I there were some still some mechanisms that I found a little uh, missing. Yeah, definitely. But you, you gave extra points for the stick man, right? Because man, is that cool? <laughs> A couple, all right. Yeah, and and this I team was the one. Second walk. <laughs> this team was the one that was out of Poland, right? Yeah, right. They were. Oh, so I that was pretty cool know. as well. First team out of Poland. That will move us to our top twenty, starting with team three eighteen, designed by Garrison, Christian, and Josh. Okay. So this robot, it had a nice ornament intake. It looks like those are finger tech mechanism wheels, and the so the elevator, the sole purpose of it is for the star. Otherwise, the shooter is all contained, pretty much eight inches, maybe ten inches off the ground. Right. So their and their star mechanism is actually kind of cool because it like it looks like the. It looks like they have plastic versa tube there. It like extends outward to place it on top of the tree. Mm-hmm. And yeah. they have a nice looking shooter. And and I think this was one of the teams that had Neo motors and used Spark controllers, Spark Max. I think so. Yes, yeah, proud of them. Yeah, no, this team, it definitely, I mean, right when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's like a 2056, 2016 shooter with that, you know, low style intake, bring it up through the bottom. Um, but I like that. I liked it in this, this context. Maybe it's going to be difficult um, with in terms of defense uh, because you're shooting from such a low angle and you're going to have to be so uh, close or rather far from the tree that it's pretty easy for someone to block you. Um, but I think this is one of the star mechanisms I saw that actually could st- like you know top the tree so that was something that i was definitely impressed with also i didn't really see any supports on the lift yeah no which no yeah i have that yep. noted too yep. all right that's going to move us to our 19th ranked team which is 228 created by jacob and theo so they had another um one of these uh, uh they had a really beefy arm um that was mechanically very robust in terms of the actual amount of aluminum used um still a similar pitfall where uh, it would be a very difficult thing to control uh, especially considering they didn't cat in any encoders or, or or kind of control aids um a clever thing that they did was they still had the linear you know three ball hopper with with wheels on the front to intake and, and expel uh, however their wheels were on uh were on pistons that could widen it and grab presence as well using the same same intake uh which was which was neat and clever um it it seemed 
it, it seemed like it could be effective, although again, very difficult to control something like that. Um, but the fact that they had a, a kind of positive present grabbing that they didn't have to, you know, drive around and push presents to score them, but could just pick them and, and place them, uh, it is a good, a good thought. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think, uh, the, probably the area where I knocked this team the most was just how narrow their intake range was because it's only the size of an ornament and their vertical rollers. Uh, you have to line very precisely on the balls. And as a driver, I remember having a robot like this. Um, it was pretty hard to, to grab the balls and being this game, um, that robot was a stronghold bot being this game has three balls instead of one ball you have to intake. I just can't imagine, um, this being that effective when it actually came to competition. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember our original power-up claw only opened about half an inch wider than the cube, and we had a pneumatic claw that would open like that. So, yeah, yeah it was difficult. Definitely. All right, that'll move us to Team 287 in the 18th ranked spot, which is catted by Jack and Nick. All right, so for 287, I felt that it was a really good design, and it was very creative in the fact, like... Their lift, they have like a lift mechanism, but the fact of the matter is they have this interesting magazine to which gravity feeds the ball into the shooter. Now, I think, or what I knocked this team for was the fact that uh, there's a chance that the ball could get stuck in there because I think even though it's, I didn't know the exact measurements or I didn't see the exact measurements of it, but a ball could get stuck at the top and that's just one wasted ball that you lost the capacity to shoot. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely something that teams have to take a look for. Uh, having decreased ball capacity right away um, will really hinder you in terms of competition. And you see it every year when you have a shooting game. And then another thing to knock against them, when fully extended, they yet again follow to Kesha syndrome and just go timber. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely had um, some issues issues there. All right. That's going to move us to our 17th ranked team, which is team 56, made up by a three-time Catathon winner, Bram. All right. So this robot, it had a trademarked all-side intake. And um, so they had a lot of cameras on it for driver aid which was nice they had a good swerve drive i think they used neo motors on it yeah, yeah. And, and i couldn't find spark maxes uh they're on the, <laughs> the tower oh they were okay yeah i, I literally <laughs> just i literally just saw them right now <laughs> uh and they're i their shooter's nice and i also the intake about how the balls get fed up into the tower kind of confuses me. I don't really see how exactly that would work. And I, I don't actually remember from judging this robot. Was it the the hood on it variable angle or fixed? Uh, I think it was variable. I I don't remember exactly. I, th- I thought I remember seeing a motor that caught that allows it to go variable angle. Okay. Yeah. No, I wasn't wasn't sure about this one. Um. I like the whole all-side intake thing. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen a robot that pulled it off to this extent. It actually looks like it'll work, um, which a lot of times... The closest thing I've seen is Deep Penguin Ears, 1717. Right, yeah. And it works pretty well for them, so uh, maybe it'll work for uh, Bram in this case. Yeah, it was crazy. Five <laughs> five stereo cameras for kind of like field localization or something like that he mentioned. And all those, all those intake shafts have... have bevel gears on the ends of them so they're all tied together it it was a like a jungle of a robot but it was it was fun (laughs) to judge and uh bram is on team 900 so any surprises (laughs) there i don't think there are (laughs) so uh that'll move us to the 16th ranked team which is team 94 designed by adrian and josh so 94 was um was a really solid concept when i first looked at it um i thought it was going to be really good Uh um after digging into a bit more it was pretty good um there were a few kind of uh, moderate uh, mechanical oversights such as how they were uh using a kind of conveyor belt to intake uh, to uh to to shoot um the the conveyors conveyors don't naturally stick to the rollers so they end up the, their conveyors may or may not have worked. It was uh, probably hard to say. Um, the CAD lacked some detail. Uh, what was really funny is that uh, they specifically in their 
uh, pit scouting document, I think, call out Brian and say they want to beat him. Um, <laughs> and uh, they were missing fasteners uh, and shaft retention wasn't there on a lot of components. So there was some stuff to, to be desired. Um, but the concept of the uh, Cuban, Cuban take and or present intake, I'm sorry, and the ornament shooter were, were pretty good, uh, although the ornament intake wasn't very wide. It had mechanism wheels, but only about as wide as the uh, the, the intake was. So, I mean, the CAD detail was was okay. Oh, it used an X-Drive. That was that was fun. I'm not sure there's a, a picture of that, but they had a whole kind of holonomic X-Drive thing on the bottom, which was clever and probably could work uh, if there wasn't much defense. And they had the extra wheels as well for the encoders. Yeah, they did. Oh, yeah, I noticed that. It was... It was it was it was solid, but there's some some oversights, I think. Definitely, um, but they ended up in rank 16, so they did pretty well. Yeah. That'll move us to the 15th ranked team, which is team 262, created by one guy, and that's Lawton. All right, so for 262, I felt that it was a very creative design. Now, I, it's a question of okay, did you do this right? It basically you feed it you feed it in from the feeder station and it'll throw and it'll throw itself on into the high goal and that could work that is a very very plausible design now the question is did they do it right and there were some mechanical portions missing which I felt that they couldn't do it right with this but with some work they could easily do it and again this. Again, another knock on the steam for the Kesher syndrome, but it's it's honestly a very simple robot to feed, and it's very simple to score points. Yeah, definitely. Although it was a four, I think a four or three DOF arm, uh, which uh, with, with I think a star depositor of some kind. I, I might have some. Yeah, it, there was but... an attempt at it. I wasn't sure. I don't. I don't know if it'll work. Um, I tried to play around with it in CAD. The geometry looked right. I just don't know mechanically if it'll actually function. Yeah, hard to control, though, but yeah. it may be possible. All right. I think that's going to move us to our 14th-ranked team, which is 310, catted by Sam and Nate. Okay, so this robot was... It It was like it had a wide hopper for getting ornaments from the Decoration Depot, and it like spat them out into the tree. And they had a good drivetrain, and... Overall, just seemed like a well put together bot, and it. Um, I think I'm looking at the wrong notes. I mean, yeah, no. So, I mean, when I took a look at this robot, the first thing that was I noticed was well, one, it'll be effective, um, but it didn't have a floor intake. And with this game, there's three three balls being shot into a goal that the the, the holes are pretty small, so there's gonna be a lot of balls that are going to hit the side of the tree and bounce off. So there's going to be a lot of balls on the ground. Um, so I think not having a floor intake in this game is going to be very detrimental. Um, so that's definitely like one part that I really knocked it. And then one thing I knocked it for was that the distance in which they have to shoot it because their, their shooter uh, in, compare, in compared to the distance of how far it needs to go I feel like there's going to be too much fall off that they might just end up missing it entirely and have, and then just waste a ball that they can't even get. <laughs> Agreed. I think this is something that we've already gone through some teams with and then we'll see more that I really liked. Some teams, uh, a lot of teams did uh, angled elevators that would uh, match the slope or run parallel to the tree. Right. Um, so they wouldn't gain distance to shoot as they went up. Uh, this wasn't one of those teams. Yep. All right, I think that handily brings us to Team 246, who came in the 13th ranked spot and was created by Jonas and Jack. Yeah, uh, this was uh, another uh, pretty solid, um, well, well catted or well conceived uh, tilting hopper on an elevator robot. Uh, we, we saw a lot of those. Uh, it was. Um, it, it seemed effective. Um, it looked like the elevator was missing some components. Um, it's it, it was hard to tell. Um, because there, it was pretty dense in the base, uh, but it looked like there were uh, some some pulleys or motors missing, uh, something missing. Uh, they had a star mechanism that didn't look complete and was was dubiously effective. Um, but they did something that I did notice they did really well was they accurately estimated how much torque they would actually need to pivot that hopper on one end. A lot of teams tilted it in the middle or did something else, but they tilted it from one end and actually 
geared their motors appropriately, and I think they put encoders on them too. I'm not sure, but they, there were a lot of kind of details that it was clear that they looked into, uh, which is why they they got scored pretty high. But um, but the star mechanism was was not as great. So yeah, solid I mean. I think if this team had have completed their star mechanism and maybe refined it a little bit, they would have definitely been within the top 10. Um, and I think that's going to bring us to Team 207, designed by Lucas and Julia, who took the 12th rank spot. All right, so for this robot, it was an over, it was overall a good robot. Like It had some mechanical features missing with its... like with its like ball deployment mechanism and all but the conveyor belt from uh, feeding the ball f- feeding the balls from the from their uh popper into their shooter was very very good and uh and then also add on the fact that they have a really a, a very simple and uh efficient uh present mover and that got them really high on my list Absolutely. I think you'll find uh, when we get to some of the top teams, a lot of teams decided to get rid of presence and not worry about presence. Um, and I think that 207 um, did a good job of prioritizing both presence and ornaments. Are, are, are we going to call out the fact that 207 did differential swerve with uh, Neos? Yeah, <laughs> I think you are. Because they did. Yep. It, uh, it was that I, I looked into it and I do not know about the meta of swerve design and especially differential swerve. I've been out of that for a while. Um, it looked mechanically, it, 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 they used a differential right and, and d- designed it to be, you know, it, it might, it might work. I have no clue, but it was a really good, you know, creative packaging and, and they did it well. So that got some points for me. Definitely. Um, One and thing. Go. Uh, one thing that confused me about it was I don't know what is on top of the bumpers. I think it's yeah. snow. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. I, yeah, it, I didn't it looked like it looked like a spine or something. Yeah, no, yeah. I saw that. Uh, it wasn't in their pit scouting sheet, um, so yeah. it's like uh, I think they were just trying to get a little festive. Um, it made their bumpers illegal, so unfortunately, it knocked them out of their top ten. But uh, <laughs> it didn't actually. But overall, I, I thought it was a nice little touch. All right, so. Rounding out the last couple, the last team that is outside of our top 10, we have team 281, created by Theo and Sanford. So this one had, it, it had a nice three-stage lift that is one of the ones that would, is angled so it could match the angle of the tree. And they had, it's like a large hopper shooter thing. And I mean, it looked, it looked pretty solid. And it'd be lightweight because it looks like it's polycarbonate. Yep. And they have a swerve drive. And their intake, it looked a lot like some 2012 and 2016 intakes combined. So, Yeah, no, I actually really like their intake. I like wide intakes in general, especially in games with a lot of balls. Um, and also, I think probably a really good, you mentioned the polycarbonate. And I think that's really important with the way that they designed this. Because it's tilting over... Uh, the side of their robot if you have a very heavy piece at the top that's holding all the balls it's gonna make it really prone to tipping onto the tree um, which would violate rules so i think that was a really good addition to make sure they weren't going to get themselves into any trouble yeah my two notes were that the polycarbon take was smart and they probably needed it Um, however the piece as it was designed would be very difficult to form it was almost like a the whole box kind of shape or tube shape out of polycarb, which is difficult possible, but it might need some other gusseting or bracketing instead of just being a contiguous piece. Also their elevator tilted was um, used hex extrusion uh, instead of rectangle, which actually simplifies the elevator a lot because you can use a single V bearing or V kind of roller on either side instead of three normal bearings The the use of a hex extrude for the elevator was a really interesting concept that I liked. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe.